Welcome, everyone. I see we have lots of new people in the chat. Well, not new necessarily, but we have names that I haven't seen much before. Voslarum Zero, I don't recall seeing you before. So, hello. Welcome to the stream. Um, who else have we got? We've got all the usual suspects. We've got Bert. We've got Nuna. We've got Stalia. We've got Ducking. Uh, we've got... Uh, 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 uh. No, I've run out. Oh, we've got Shiva. Uh, we have Words Without Rules. Hello, Words Without Rules. I've seen you on Tumblr before, but I've never seen you on a stream. Wonderful to have you here. And we have Sonic Man XP. Greetings, Sonic Man XP. Welcome to the stream. Oh, and Bert is gone. Farewell, Bert. Was lovely to have you here, however briefly. Oh, yay, a new follower. Thanks for the follow, Yodomo. Yodomo? Yodomo. Yodomo. Why are we all angry? Why Angie Ninja Ninja? Well, it's lovely to have you here, words. Just setting everything up to get started. Bear with me a second. If you look into the background of the shot, you will see my as ever, my guest star Grey is currently curled up in a little lump over there. There she is. She may wake up at some point during the stream. Yes, Ninja, your Discord nickname did get changed. I was having a little joke. It amused me. So, um, regarding the usual reward requests and everything, we have, I've changed a few things now. Now, because this is a stream, a, a modding workshop, like last week, um, some of the things are turned off. So, um, basically the stuff, the stuff that is intrusive and prevents me from doing the modding that I'm trying to do, um, I have, I have switched, I've paused them, uh, just in the interest of keeping the stream moving. However, we've added some new ones that, uh, Twitch has now added. Um, Twitch have added a thing, uh, have added a whole bunch of new suggestions for channel rewards with, uh, channel points. So I've activated a whole bunch of those, so you may now spend points to make me hydrate myself, um, by drinking water. And, um, you may... Uh, what is it? You may give me a posture check. So if you see me slouching, you can hit that button and that will remind me to sit up straight. Um, oh, there's a shout out, which I will now enable because I can always do that. So if you want a shout out for a particular name, if you want me to shout someone out, you can just hit that button and request a shout out, which is fine. Um, you can request to have yourself timed out if that entertains you. Um, and there's some other new ones, but I won't enable them today because, again, they're slightly disruptive. My hair is getting floofy, isn't it? I need to get it cut. Um, oh, Shiva has redeemed hydrate, which means... Oh, I had a water bottle here, and I put it down somewhere. Give it one sec. found it yeah no you can um you can redeem points just to make me leave the room that's that's sort of gonna be a thing <laughs> there we go i have hydrated <laughs> yeah if you spam hydrate you don't i think there'll come a point when i'll probably turn off the hydrate button if you spam it too much <laughs> uh, just pop that over there It's a hot day. Socks are for the week. <sighs> wow, Bethesda Softworks just posted something. What did they post? Anything Skyrim exciting? Anything of interest? <laughs> it's like the posh Beatles up in here. <laughs> if you say so, Nuna. No, it needs a trim. Um, but, uh, lockdown, you know? Lockdown. So, <laughs> we'll see. Um, what have I been up to? I have been working, uh, pretty much full-time. Um, but now it is five o'clock, so it's the end of the working day, so I will be modding. Uh, but we're doing things a little differently today. Today we're doing a new thing. Uh, this is a Skyrim modding workshop. So the idea with this is it'll sort of be the same as last Thursday in that um, 
I am working on Lucy and we're doing another interaction patch. But the focus with this is if any of you guys have questions about modding, just ask me them. And if I can answer, if I know the answer, I will walk you through it. You know, I'm happy to explain any aspects of modding uh, that I know about that you guys want help with. Or if you want to bounce ideas off me, ask me if I think things would work. Anything really, you know, um, this is a sort of, yeah, a workshop environment space. So if you want to ask me questions, I'm all yours. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be making this a regular thing every Thursday from now on. So every Thursday from 5pm BST, usually for about three hours, so we'll usually run till 8pm, um, will be these uh, Skyrim modding workshop streams, so I'll just work on some aspect of Lucian and I'll answer any of your modding questions. Or indeed not modding questions, as usual, you can sort of ask me anything. But yeah, it's got to sort of focus on that sort of thing. If that sounds fun to you, I don't know, that's what I'm going to try for a bit. Um, so let's get started. Uh, do, 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 do. Just need to fiddle with the settings a little bit. That's my setting fiddling song. Close all that down. We don't need that open either. And you don't need to see my online banking and stuff because I don't want stuff like that on the internet. There we go, and I'll close that as well. And that. I'll be right with you. Yes, so uh, unfortunately there's no canon way to uh, bring followers to Sovereign Guard. You can, Inigo has a summon function, which is fine for him. But um, that whole... I like the idea of that whole Sovereign Guard thing being something for the Dragonborn to do alone, you know? And uh, there's only room on the dragon for one. And I'm not keen to add a summon spell for Lucian, so it sort of makes sense to have him not not come along to Sovereign Guard on that regard. I, I kind of wrote dialogue for him to uh, be saying goodbye to you before then and then uh, welcoming you when you come back. So that's kind of the direction I'd like to go with it. Um, you have 10,000 channel points. Uh, well, I mean, you can spend them on making me hydrate lots. Um, even questions for Lucian? I mean, yeah, you can ask me what Lucian might think about things, I guess. Uh, Lucian might need to ask the Dragonborn for a haircut. All right, I know I need a haircut. I will get one at the first possible opportunity when haircuts are a thing again. Uh, right, gonna switch over to the screen camera. Boop. Oh, I'm glad it makes you emotional. That's what we like. Good cry, I hope. Yeah, I'm hydrating for free, ruining my own economy. Can I dye my hair? Uh, no. No, I don't think I will do that, but thank you for the suggestion. I'll bear that one in mind. Um, but on this occasion, no. Thank you for the follow, Is in Kisco? Is in Cisco? Eyes in Sisko. Hello, Swiggity Swio. It's Dio. Welcome to the stream. Uh, right, so we're just boosting up the creation kit here. So I'm going to find... Uh, actually, we'll park that because I need to create the patch in SSE Edit according to the usual template before we go any further. So let's get that fired up. Let's get it fired up. Oh, Grey has awakened. Uh, no, the goodbye before you go to Sovereign Guard. So when you get on the dragon to fly off to Sovereign Guard, if you talk to Lucian just before you do that, he will say goodbye to you and wish you luck. And it's intended to be slightly emotional. So today we are doing the Staff of Sheogorath Creation Club file. That's what I'll be adding interactions for, which is a fun little quest involving the Fork of Horripilation. Um, and I'm hoping it's short enough that we can rattle through it in the usual three hours today. And release something at the weekend. Or possibly tomorrow. Oh, you downloaded a hug mod just so you can hug Lucy and all that so sweet. Oh, 
Oh, bless. I'm sorry for making you cry, but also I'm glad I did because that's good. We like the feels. Thanks for the follow, the Hermit85. Lots of new followers today. Right, so I'm going to do my usual hacky thing in order to create a patch that's dependent on both these two files with an ESL flag. So I do it in an SSE edit like this, and I'm going to do copy, as it doesn't actually matter what I do, just take a random asset belonging to that mod, copy it as an override into a new file, which we're going to call Lucian Staff of Sheogorath Patch. There you go. Uh, and that's created that, and we're going to immediately delete that because we're not interested in that asset that can go. But what it has done is create a master dependency on the Creation Club file. So now I can go on this and I can click uh, Add Masters, and I can manually add the Lucian ESP. And there we go, we now have both masters added to a file which also has the ESL flag. And that is excellent progress. That's what we want now. So we can open it up, save that, open it up in Creation Kit, and we can get started. Made no big deal about going to Sovereign Guard. <laughs> emotions are good. It's healthy to have emotions. Right. So now we can open that file that we just made. There it is always sorted to the bottom and okay uh yeah i notice gray has got up behind us so i'll just bring her over for hello say hello gray she says hello my guest star you're more popular than me, I know. There we go. <sighs> Voslarum says, Joseph, would it be possible to make shouts doesn't affect followers? It would be really useful, like fire breath doesn't hurt Lucian and followers. Is that possible? I'm afraid it's not possible, no. Sadly, Skyrim was not designed for the concept of friendly fire. Yeah, that's not a thing. Uh, the engine was not designed to have... Oi, don't do that. She's scratching my bed. Don't do it. Um, Skyrim wasn't designed to support multiple followers at the same time, so friendly fire incidents will sadly always happen. There are perks you can get, like through the Dragonborn DLC, which minimise it, uh, reduce the friendly fire, um, but there's no way to outright prevent it, I'm afraid. Sorry. So you'll have to be a bit careful. I think she wants to leave. Sorry, I keep, for those of you who are new, I keep looking down to the left because that's where the chat is. I've got it on my laptop next to the, next to the PC screen, so that's why I'm looking. But I'll try and remember to look up into the camera more often because I know I don't do that very much and it makes me look like I'm ignoring you most of the stream. Right, so... Oh, Shiva. It's nice to see that um, you guys like having Lucian with you. Sweet that you miss him. Right, so we're going to go and we're going to create a new quest. That's how we're going to start this off. Um, I'm going to tick that box which shows only the forms that are relevant to the patch uh, that I'm currently working on. You get this box if you have New Chem's Creation Kit Fixes, which is available in the Skyrim Nexus. If you don't have that, you should definitely download it because it is an absolute godsend. Right. You told Lucian off, and you get a happy memory from that. Gugh, meanie. Right, then we're going to call this quest J.R. Lucian CC, because we're Creation Club. Staff of Sheogorath. 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 Deidre, Prince of Madness, at your service. Cheese for everyone. Oh, we had a gling. What went gling? Another follower! Thank you very much for following, Monk! Starly redeemed hydrate! Your wish is my command. 
It'll be very important when I'm voice acting later. And the posture one as well. Please use that when you see me slouching because I know I have a problem with my posture. I know I frequently slouch and that's something I need to work on. So we're going to create some stages for this quest in order to track our progress through it. This is going to run in parallel to the Creation Club quest. So what is this modding workshop? So the basic idea with this is I'm just going to work on Lucian. I'm going to crack on with this patch I'm making for him to make him interact with the Creation Club's uh, Staff of Shiagarath file. And if any of you have questions you'd like to ask me about modding, either about why I'm doing a particular thing here, or about what you should do to solve a particular problem that you're having with your mod, or how you might go about achieving a particular thing, or whether I think a thing's a good idea, anything, any question to do with modding, or indeed not to do with modding, um, just feel free to chirp up and ask me, and I will divert whatever I'm doing in order to answer your question and hopefully help you with your mod. So it's sort of an open forum where I've got this stuff to crack on with if nobody's asking stuff. But if at any point you want to ask anything, I'm more than happy to help. That's the idea. We'll see how well it goes. Oh, Shiva, I'm so pleased to hear it. I want him to be your buddy. He wants to be your buddy. So I'm going to set a priority for this quest, because that's always important. And that priority has to be a little bit higher than the standard follower quest for Lucian, which has a priority of 40. So here we've got a priority of 50, which will mean the game will evaluate this first before going back to his default dialogue. Um, so we're now going to fire up my friend UESP in order to look at the Creation Club stuff. Uh that actually and close that down there we go onto the streamer profile that's more like it uesp creation club um and this is going to be staff of sheogorath and we have a bot in the chat i'll just quickly ban them give me a second or unless one of the moderators is on that faster than me i don't know There we go. Banned! I mean, it's nice of the bots to uh, bother adding to my view account. <laughs> nice of them to show up, but no, I don't want them advertising stuff in my chat. Thank you. Right, anyway, here we have the Staff of Cre Shielgorath Creation Club file, and these are all the assets that it adds. Now, the thing to start with here is the quest. Put a fork in it. This is the quest that allows you to acquire the items in the mod. So it starts, now it starts by default when you, when you install the mod, uh, when you install the Creation Club file. However, um, we don't want to comment on that because there's a couple of unofficial patches that will disable that initial objective so it doesn't start on installation so we don't want Lucian to comment on it straight away because there's no reason that he would know about this quest there's no reason he'd know about the staff of Sheogorath beforehand um, so we're gonna have the first thing he comments on is when you first discover this thing this is the mysterious message from Sheogorath added to the retching netch on Solstheim which is a note and a fork and the quest will start when you either take the note or you take the fork now I'm gonna wait for you to have taken both. I'm going to wait for us to have hit stage 30. And then when you've hit stage 30, we're going to get the first comment. Which is going to be an idle comment. Oh, yay! Thank you so much for subscribing, Unileith. Unileith? 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 I don't know. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, that's really kind of you. Oh, and you have a question as well. Um... Uh, oh, and we've also got a question from Voslarum. Right, uh, I'm going to work through both of these then. Uh, Unileith, really cool that streaming this. I do have a question, something that's been keeping me from starting to work on more complex mods. I've heard of many bad practice and inefficient slash terrible scripts, scripts that are bad for performance or cause crashes. Any idea where to read about what the best practices are? So, the Creation Kit Wiki is your, is your friend for scripting. Um, every single scripting function that exists is documented in some form on the Creation Kit Wiki, which I will quickly show you. So one of the uh, script functions that I use all the time is GetStage. So if you type in GetStage Creation Kit into the internet, you will get 
a link. It'll be the first result, which will be the page on the creation kit wiki for that thing. Thank you very much for the follow, Yagizan. Um, but yes, so here now we have the implementation. And actually, sometimes you have to click on the papyrus version, which gives you the script version rather than the console version. So here we are. And this gives you a perfect implementation example of how you should use this function. So it has examples. And if you want more chat about it, you can click the discussion button. Oh, thanks for the follow, you in the leaf as well while I'm talking about this. Right, so yes. And you'll get some discussions about this as well. So if you follow on the page, if you follow the way it's implemented in an example like this, then you will usually be absolutely fine. So that will give you your best practice for how to implement a particular function. And any possible thing you want to do, you can find on the Creation Kit wiki. Um, so that is a really good thing to do. The thing to avoid, um, other than that, the main thing to avoid that can result in causing crashes and issues is when you have scripts that loop forever. It's called polling, when you have something that's constantly checking for something after a period of time. So if you implemented a script, for instance, um, and you wanted to check the player's level, you could set that script to every 10 seconds, check the player's level, and if that level is above 20, start a quest. But that's going to be very intensive, because every 10 seconds the game is going to be evaluating that script, um, which will keep going and going and going. And the more scripts you've got running at the time, so if you had lots of different mods all adding scripts that were constantly checking, then it's going to increase the load on your CPU. Uh, and on the game engine and potentially result in crashes. So what you'd be better to do is rather than have that script polling all the time, constantly checking, you could tie it to something else. Either on, I believe there's an in-game event that is triggered when the player levels up. So you could say when that event happens, check the player's level. Or you could try and tie it to something more cunning, like a location change. I often use location changes for Lucian. So the game will fire an event when the player changes location. So you could say whenever the player changes location, i.e. fast travels or something, then what is their level? And that would be a more efficient way in order to implement a script. Um, but yeah, the Creation Kit Wiki is your friend for all of these things. And otherwise, your best place to go to is probably just the Bethesda, the Bethesda or the Nexus forums they will have, uh, they've got some great people on them who will help you with all the best practices for scripting. So definitely check those out. Hope that helps. No problem. Um, right. Uh, what else is going on? Right. Voslarum, you had the other question. You said everything okay, but its name is Marker Storage Unit. So you designed a big squareage room which has everything. Tanning rack, smithing, storage, alchemy, and enchanting table. Everything is okay, but its name is marker storage unit. How can I fix that? Now that's interesting. Because that won't be a default name. Marker storage unit is a cell, I believe, that's already in the game. So it's possible, rather than create your own cell, you might have accidentally edited an existing one. Um, alternatively, if you have six, if you copied and pasted an original cell. If you copied and pasted the marker storage unit in order to create a new cell, um, then you can change that easily through the creation kit or through SSE edit or, well, or um, TESV edit. So I'd suggest doing it through that. That's this tool here. And if you want to change the name of a cell that you've created, so if we open up, let's say, Lucian, if we open up Lucian's ESP, and I'll quickly just show you what's going on with that. Um, this is a really useful tool, SSE Edit or alternatively TESV Edit. They are the tools um, that you can use for, they're like a scalpel where the creation kit is a sledgehammer. So the creation kit you use for creating, um, SSE Edit, or I'll just call it X Edit because it's for both. Um, X Edit you use for tweaking things. So I could go into Cell here and I get all the cells in Lucian's mod. And if I open this here, oh, don't want to show you that. That's a spoiler. Don't want to show you that. There we are, Doomsbathar. That's more like it. So if I wanted to change the name of Doomsbathar, then I'd click click on it. You'd open up the cell. You'd find its name record here. And you'd instead change it to Steve's House. And that's all there is to it. And then it's changed. And then you just need to save, which I won't do because I don't want to change Doomsbathar to Steve's House. Um, but then you just do that. You'd save and you'd close. And your cell will no longer be called Marker Storage Unit. It will be called whatever you've just changed its name to. If that makes sense, hope that helps. It's hard to know precisely what your situation is without seeing the mod. Um, but I hope that's vaguely useful. What do you mean enhance image? Zoom and enhance. Well, are you saying, was it blurry for you or something? Do I need to, um, don't know, increase the resolution? 
It's a bit tricky. Oh, to see the thing you said not to see, right. Oh yes, the spoiler thing, yeah. I'm with you now, sorry. It's because there's a stream delay, but there's like 15 seconds delay between me saying something and you hearing it. So then often I've forgotten what you're talking about when you comment on something I've just said. I'm with you. You won't glean much from zooming in on that anyway, it's just the name of a thing. Right, so, we'll hop back into here. We're creating a new topic under Misk, which is going to be a stack for Lucian's idle dialogue. That's the things he naturally says in the background while our quest is going on. I hope those answers were useful. Feel free to keep the questions coming if you want to know anything else, because that's what this workshop's for. Right, so this is going to be a comment on what this letter says that you find and put a fork in it. So let's have a look at the mysterious note, see what the text is, remind myself, because it's been a while since I played this. Dear person who happied upon this letter, it is your lucky day. Nearby you will find the fork of horripilation. Oh, how I do love cutlery, but what is it, you must be asking? Well, horripilation is the standing of hairs on end due to cold, fear, or excitement. And excitement is indeed upon us, my friend. Take this fork and use it to kill two special bull netches in single combat. Each will yield an artifact. The Eye of Sirta? Is it Sirta? Let me know if you think it's pronounced differently. The text on screen is very hard to read, for me at least. Now, that is a good point, because I am running the screen at 1440p, but we are only streaming in 720p, so I can probably fix that for you. Can you read everything now? Apologies for that. I should have checked the uh, stream manager uh, rather than just cracking on. Hello, Medusa. Welcome to the stream. A baked potato changed my life. A baked potato showed me the way. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to see very much without your glasses. Uh, right, anyway, so, a challenge from the Daedric Prince of Madness. Are we sure it's genuine? I mean, it might just be some drunk messing around with a fork. So, I'll have that there. Hmm. I was thinking I might have two variants for this, but actually I can probably make one work for either whether you've met Shogoroth already or not. Yeah, that's fine. Let's park that there for the moment. And we'll add some conditions for it. Hey, Macon, welcome to the stream. Oh, and hello, Grapple Mint. A new person. Wonderful to have you here. I love having all these new people today. It's very exciting. But yeah, thanks for checking the pronunciation, Nuna. Theatre. Right, so we're going to start with Get Stage. And this is going to be on the CC Staff of Shea Gorath quest. And we're looking to check whether or not that is equal to 30. It's got to be equal to 30. So that's when you've got both the fork and you've read the note. So you've accepted the trial. Get stage equals 30. Um... And that is, and we will now check this quest stage, get stage, JR Lucian CC Staffordshire Gorath, make sure that that's less than 10, because this is going to be our starting piece of dialogue, um, and we're going to want to evaluate that second. So, uh, we're going to say say this once. You can only say it every 24 hours. Now, before I add the relevant script for this, I need to go back into my preferences and set a new ID for this patch. This is an ID, a unique prefix that will appear to stuff appear on every script I add to this mod, which should prevent it from conflicting with other mods. So the prefix for this one is going to be JR9. There we go. What's going on in the chat? Yeah, it could be because of the Reddit post. 
I hope. I don't know. Um, not many people have clicked on it yet, but I hoped it would. I don't know. If anyone's interested, tell them at least that this exists. The Hermit, you appeared in my Twitch recommended, and I recognise your name from the Nexus. Oh, excellent! I'm glad Twitch is recommending things then. That's good. The algorithm is in my favour. So there we go. We've applied that. So now when I create a script, which I'll attach to this... It appears with JR9 as the prefix, which is good. So we're going to start with get owning quest. That's a way of automatically grabbing this quest. Dot set stage 10. So when Lucian says this line, the stage JR Lucian stuff of Shergoreth uh, will be set to 10, which should prevent this line from repeating because it will only be valid when the line, when the stage is less than 10, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go into quest data now and set some general conditions for this quest because I should have done that before. These will apply to every line in this quest. I can't wait to, I can't wait for Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil either. That's going to be fantastic when that's ready. So get is ID JR Lucian to make sure only Lucian will say any of these lines. Here we go. And I'm now the other one to add is is sneaking. Because none of these lines are going to be whisper lines. These are all going to be spoken lines. And Lucian will only whisper while sneaking. So none of these lines will trigger while Lucian is sneaking. So we're going to have that apply to all of them. So now the other one to add is get in cell. There we go. Get in cell. Uh, Falk Reef, Dead Man's Drink. And by setting this, this is going to mean none of these lines can fire while the player is, cur player is currently in Dead Man's Drink. And that will mean that Lucian won't say these lines the moment you pick him up. He'll at least wait until... So if you went and started this quest, then went back to Falkreath and picked up Lucian, he's not going to start talking about this quest like he was with you when you started it, if that makes sense. And then the last one to add is to check that Lucian is recruited. Uh, because you don't want him to be saying this stuff before you've actually met him. So we're checking he's in the follower faction. And there we go. That should cover everything. Oh, more questions. Stalia says, Joseph, what tips... What are tips you have for voice acting a follower? Right, so... Most important thing, I think, is to um, use a voice for your character that is comfortable for you to speak in and easy. Because if you are voice acting a follower, you're going to be doing a lot of lines. It's going to be in the hundreds, in all, in all probability. And that means it's got to be easy for you to record lots of these in quick succession uh, without wearing yourself out and particularly damaging your voice. So you, while a Dunma might typically speak in a kind of growl like that, I can do that for about 20 lines. And after that, my throat will start to get sore. And if I tried to do that for thousands of lines like I have for Lucian, that would cause me big problems. So, therefore, Lucian speaks very similarly to me. Um, uh, equally, if it's an accent that's difficult for you to maintain, you might not want to do that. Um, because, again, if anything that's going to make you tired, anything that's going to wear you out, you probably want to avoid. Um, however, that said, Gary Hesketh, who voices Inigo, smart blue cat, puts on a voice. He has a Scottish accent normally, and he puts on um, a completely different voice for Inigo. Um, and he does that fine for thousands of lines. So there's no rule that works for everyone. Um, and the other thing, I think, is only do what you find fun. Don't try and voice act a role or create a follower or whatever it is that you aren't really interested in because you will lose the will to do it. Uh, it applies for any, mod any modding, really, because it's all voluntary and there's very little incentive to keep going except your own fun. Um, you've got to do something that you find fun. Those are my two things, yeah. Hello, Skeleton. Welcome to the stream. Today we're working on a patch for Staff of Shea Gorath. Um, but I'm also um, answering any questions about modding that I can possibly answer for you. Uh, it's a workshop. Yeah, it's just so important that you're able to consistently keep up the voice.
Oh, I bet. Reeklings are difficult to voice. That can really get you in the throat. <laughs> You're welcome, Stalia Potato. You killed Lucian? Don't kill Lucian, Crumbled Sanity. Exactly, Yagasan. If it's not fun, it becomes a job, and it's a job that you're not paid for. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, having a good mic helps. Um, That's quite important, to be honest. Uh, Yeah, invest in a good mic to start with. Um, Only if you're sure you want to actually get into voice acting. Don't spend hundreds of pounds on a microphone if you're not going to use it. Um, But, yeah, it does make a world of difference when it comes to the quality of your mod, if you've got a good quality mic. And yes, definitely reloading a save is a much better idea if you accidentally kill Lucian than resurrecting him, because resurrecting him is liable to cause problems. Right, so I've implemented those conditions. We just saved. Burnt through 45 minutes of the stream time already. Lucian is essential while he is recruited. Ah. And I can show you that implementation if you like. Um... If we go to the quest JR Lucian and you check his alias. So if we go into JR Lucian follower and the alias for Lucian, um, it has that E flag, which means Lucian is essential while he's recruited. But when he is dismissed, when he is not recruited, he becomes protected, which means you can kill him and only you can kill him. Uh, now, if you hit him several times in combat, he will leave you and then you can kill him. But the idea with this is that you can't one-shot him. And this is because I think it's important for Immersion that should you so wish you are able to kill Lucian and that he will fight back against you if you attack him. I think these things are important. Um, uh, but it should help by help you not accidentally kill him. So yes, if you hit him too much, he leaves you. But generally, if anything like that happens, your best bet is just to reload your last save. If it's a Bethesda game, you should be saving a lot anyway because of crashes and bugs and things. Um, so yeah, if anything ever goes wrong, just reload your last save. It's going to save you a world of pain. Um, right, so we've done that one line. And we've checked the quest, which is fine, really. So when that stage has been set, I think it would be nice to then be able to talk to Lucian about what he knows about the staff of Shergoroth. And we can dump some lore on you. So, um, J.R. Lucian, CC Staff the Share Graph, A1. Ah, I don't want to call it A1, because I want to call this A1. Graph Conversation A1. So this I'm just going to quickly rename, if it will let me. There we go. So, what do you know about the stuff? of Shea Gorath. Because that's mentioned in the letter here. If you're successful, you'll be rewarded quite handsomely with the staff of Shea Gorath. How does Lucian feel about the Stormcloaks and how will he interact with the player if the player supports the Stormcloaks? So currently there is no dialogue implemented in the mod for the Civil War. That's on my to-do list, but I haven't got round to adding that. So currently Lucian won't care whether you're a Stormcloak or an Imperial. However, he is an Imperial. Um, his mother is a, is a captain in the Imperial Legion. Um, he has a very strong relationship with his family back in Cyrodiil. Uh, so he would never support the Stormcloaks fighting against the Empire. So in future updates, when I do add commentary on the Civil War, that is going to be an issue for him if you join the Stormcloaks, yes. Oh, I'm glad it worked, uh, Vos, Voslarum. That's not very friendly, Crumbled Sanity. I'm sure Sophia doesn't appreciate that. And if you want to have a better day... 
You must listen to what the baked potatoes say. Okay, so what does Lucian know about the stuff of Shergoreth? Um, let's bring up all the lore that UESP has on it that we can dump on the player. So here's the lore from Skyrim. We'll also bring up the general lore page and its entry for the Shivering Isles and sort of conglomerated all. So we've got lots of stuff on the lore there and also mentions of it on the Shivering Isles. So let's see how we can condense this into a few lines. What does Lucian think about the sword Umbra? Well, if you want to find out, you could download... Uh, I mean, that's if you have the Umbra Creation Club file, you could download my Umbra patch and you could listen to what Lucian has to say about it. Suffice to say, this is a sword that drives you mad and makes you aggressive and want to kill people, so he's not going to be massively keen. He also will reference the events of... Um, the Infernal City and Lord of Souls, the two Elder Scrolls novels that you can get, because they feature Umbra very prominently. Uh, right. Well, it goes without... Well, as you might guess, it belongs to Sheogorath. Usually. Although he's keen on getting people to make new ones for him. Oh, does Skyrim VR not have the Creation Club? I thought it would. I don't think Sophia is being worked on anymore, I'm afraid. I don't think that mod's had an update for um, years. So I'd be very surprised if she gets any more content, really, I'm afraid. No, Lucian doesn't have any comments for um, Cicero's hat just at the moment. But again, all of these things I'd like to add in the future. Uh, yes, he was named Lucian uh, because I went on the Elder Scrolls wiki and I looked down through all the names of Imperials and I noticed the name Lucian, which of course means light. Um, and I thought that was appealing to his character. I thought the name fitted his character, so I chose that. Um, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have gone with Lucian, because at the time I'd never played Oblivion and wasn't aware of the significance of Lucian. Le Le Do you know, I've never actually heard it said out loud, because I've still not played Oblivion. La chance? La chance? How am I supposed to say that? Anyway, the significance of Lucian the Assassin from Oblivion I wasn't aware of, uh, which of course resulted in loads of comments all talking about him when I released the Lucian mod. So in hindsight, I should probably have chosen a different name, but, you know, he's Lucian now. That's his name. Can't change it at this point. Yeah, I know, I just don't know whether that's a chance or Lachance. Oh, well, Lachance. I'm going to say Lachance. Right. I'm certainly not going to change his name now. No, not when the mod's been out for nearly two years. Uh, right, so it's the symbol of the Age Prince of Madness. It contains the power of the Shivering Isles, needed to assume the title of Mad God and sit on the throne of madness. Fair. Let's just check the wording of the note again. The idea is that whoever wields it has the right to rule the Shivering Isles. But I think it's rather unlikely Sheogorath's offering you that. So maybe it's a replica he wants you to make.
<laughs> the idea of Lucian just going up to you and saying, I'm going to change my name. Steve Flavius. That works. Did I get your last post? Um, honestly, Sonic, there's a lot of messages appearing in this chat, so I may well have missed your message. What was your message? I feel like Lucian will sneak into the Dragon Bond's room, take Umbra and throw it in a lake. That would possibly match his character. Yeah, although he probably wouldn't want to touch it. Yes, no, obviously there's not going to be just one person called Lucian. Lucian will be a common name that multiple Imperials have. Um, but for Google reasons, I probably should have chosen a different one. Right, anyway, I keep getting distracted by the chat here. So maybe it's a replica he wants you to make. Or maybe he's changed the way it all works. Or maybe... This is all just someone's idea of a joke. In any case, the staff is supposed to have the power to freeze time. I don't think we're going to get into all of this necessarily. Because um, we want a sort of potted history of it. Which sounds rather nifty. Dragonborn, my name's Dave. As you can appreciate, I was not keen, and this name, it does not sound erudite in the slightest. Uh, have you not done Lucian's quest? I hope you enjoy it when you get round to playing it. In any case, the staff is supposed to have the power to freeze time, which sounds rather nifty. Do be careful, though. Anything sheer Gorath related is bound to have a catch or two. There we go. That's more or less enough. I reckon you don't want to be too long. So guess what? Let's do that. Shivering Isles, maybe it's a replica. It's supposed to have power to freeze time. Told you what it does and a warning there. I'm happy with that. So, the conditions we're going to put on this dialogue now. Are you going to make a line where Lucian comments on the Divine Crusader armor? I will do that, but with these Creation Club files, I'm prioritizing the ones that don't conflict with Legacy of the Dragonborn. Because that's an amazing mod that has always been on my to-do list to add interactions for, and that contains its own version of the Divine Crusader armor. So I'm going to be starting with all the Creation Club files that don't conflict with Legacy, and then at the end, when I'm done with all of those, then I'll get started on the other ones, like Divine Crusader. Do you give Lucian the horse after working his stamina because nothing happened after Doomsbathar? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. But um, there is a second quest to complete after you've completed Doomsbathar. Uh, and that will unlock Lucian's horse. You say basically everything conflicts with Legacy of the Dragonborn, and not actually true. There's only a small number of the Creation Club files that outright conflict with Legacy. Legacy has a number of patches that you can use in order to integrate the Creation Club files with it, um, which work fine, and all those, the ones that patches, I'll be, you know, I'm not worried about those, because if the patches integrate the stuff properly and maintain the Creation Club content, like the quest, that's fine. The ones I'm avoiding are the ones where they have a patch uh, that outright suppresses the Creation Club content, um, like their one for Divine Crusader, which just disables the Creation Club stuff and gives the texture to their own version of the Divine Crusader armor, um, which would completely defeat the point of me adding any commentary for it, because it's an entirely different item, if that makes sense. I don't know whether that made sense. Um, anyway, get stage. 
Uh, and here we are saying what we want to know here is that the staff of Shea Gorath quest stage is what is it going to be? Is it going to be equal to what were the stages? Here we are, put a fork in it. Staff of Shea Gorath quest has got to be between 20 no got to be between 30 and 40 but not yet completed so it's going to be started and not yet completed so that's going to be greater than 20 uh, greater than greater than or equal to 30 and less than or equal to 40 and if you check those two boxes if you're somewhere between those then this line is valid i'm also going to say gets owning quest dot set stage 20 so lucian won't make his comment about whether or not it's a joke or whatever um if you've already asked him this because it's sort of this is the order for it to work in hello bingle welcome to the stream um does it start after a specific level no dooms Bathar is not tied to the level uh, what it is tied to is Lucian's approval. So you need to have completed a number of... Uh, you, well, you need to have unlocked training with him. And you need to have completed some quests with him. Uh, quests that he comments on, which you can find on my website. Um, to get his approval up. Or trained him for a certain for enough times. Every time you train him, his approval will go up. Um, and when he trusts you enough. And if you've already asked him in his questions if there's anywhere he would like to see in particular. Once you've achieved all those things, um, the quest will start on its own. Oh no, hang on, you're talking about the um, the sequel quest, the second quest, not the Dooms with our quest. That will happen, uh, I think, five in-game days after you've come, after you picked him up from Dooms with our. It might be three, it might be seven. Just pick him up, take him with you on adventures, it'll start on its own. You'll, you won't miss it. Do I see Lucy as an archer or a mage? He is whatever you want him to be. He's designed to be either a one-handed fighter or a two-handed fighter or a mage or an archer whatever you want him you can set a combat style and he can be any one of those however um personally i usually have him as a mage because i like to collect all the spells for him i think it's fun teaching him all the different spells he can learn so we've set stage one now and i'm going to make some notes here so we don't lose track of it oh gosh kaya zeb gaz lucian has made initial comment about the staff quest player has asked Lucian about the staff yes it's limited to only fire I think when you're on Solstheim or Skyrim I think so it probably won't happen if you're in Bruma or Falscar, etc. Glad you enjoyed the training dialogue words. They were quite fun to record. Yeah, like I said, it's totally up to you guys how he fights. He's designed to be flexible. Right, so we've done that. So now I think we ought to have a comment on the Fork of Horripilation. Because the idea is now... Yep. Oh, we should add some dialogue here. Not dialogue. Um, add another condition to this to make it only play if you're on Solstheim. getting current location because otherwise if you head back to skyrim and crack on with other stuff you don't want this line cluttering up the dialogue menu so dlc to solstheim location equals one great thanks for the bits bingle that's very kind of you to cheer Right, so. Hmm. 
are we really going to do this then? Hunt down bull netches using only a fork. I do so hope you know what you're doing. And for that, we're going to say get stage. J.R. Lucian CC Staffordshire Gorath has got to be less than 30. And it's got to be Uh, no, it doesn't necessarily need the previous line to have been said already. Um, because it will say, if that one's still valid, he will say that one first. Say once. 24. However, what it does require is that get stage the CC file is equal to... Uh... Yeah, is equal to 30. And that the player is on Solstein. Uh, get in location, oh, current location, get in current location, DLC to Solstein location. And that the player is currently has the fork equipped. Um, get equipped. CC fork of horripilation equals one. I'm just going to check the implementation for get equipped. I know I did this last time, but I've already forgotten to make sure I'm doing it right. Oh, and that, of course, needs to be implemented on the player, not on Lucian. So I'm going to go on to the CK wiki. Stick in get equipped. See how that behaves. Right, more questions going on. Ooh, lots more stuff I missed. Sorry, let me just catch up. The Hermit 85 redeemed timeout. Righto. Uh, out the hermit 85. Did that work? Huh, no, it didn't. That didn't work. Uh, I, my implementation is wrong. Sorry. Haven't done this before. Bear with me. <laughs> um... Mm -mm. Here we are. Time out. There we go. You've been timed out. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm not quite sure what the appeal is of doing that, but I hope you enjoy it. Um, what else have I missed? Dishonored's developers their 20th anniversary. Oh, that's cool. Good for them. I've still not played Dishonored, but I need to do that. Well, Jay Smiley, anyone can make a follower mod, really. There are enough tutorials online, and there are enough of us who will happily talk you through the process if you've got specific questions. So, honestly, it really isn't as tricky as people think it's going to be. Um, so, if you've been thinking about making a follower mod, you should totally give it a go. You don't need any experience in programming. Um, just working my way through... Good morning, Petra Wynn. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Shiva says hydrate. Grapplement says hydrate. Bingle says posture check. Thank you, Bingle. I'm slouching, aren't I? In fact, if I lose that cushion, 
Actually, that will help me keep my back up straight, I think. There we go. Posture check. And another posture check from Cheddar. Why am I interested in the Legacy of the Dragonborn? Because it's a huge mod that is uh, incredibly ambitious and really entertaining. Um, it's one of the most popular and biggest mods on the Nexus, so I think it's really great. Stalia wants timing out. All right, Stalia, this is going to time you out. There you go. You've been timed out. She's gone. <laughs> well, she clicked it. <laughs> That's what it does. If you click time out, I'll time you out. <laughs> That's that's the point of the function. It it says <laughs> Bye, Star. I'll see you again soon. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. <laughs> right, where were we? I was checking the Get Equipped implementation. This is a very slow stream. I apologise. The ducking wants timing out as well. Why? Why do you all want timing out? Twitch suggested that I add this as a function, but, um... Oh, uh, and a shout-out from Nuna to Stalia. By the way, just a quick shout-out to Stalia. I'm shouting you out. So there we go. Oh, and another timeout request. A shout-out to Ducking Awesome. I'm, I'm... Oh, no, hang on. No, there's no shout-out for Ducking Awesome. Sorry, Ducking. <laughs> but there is a shout-out to Stalia, so you've been shouted out. Well shouted. So anyway, ducking I was going to do. There we go. Ducking's been timed out. Enjoy your time out, ducking. Oh, Bingle says hydrate. You actually actively got a pop up asking if you want to time out. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, thanks for joining us, Yagasan. Have a great rest of your day wherever you are. It's been really lovely to have you. Um, Nuna says it won't let me do another shout out. Why not? Don't know. It should let you. <laughs> Leah's uh, angry in Discord that I timed her out, but that's literally, literally what you did. Oh, thanks for the bits, Bingle and an anonymous cheerer. Thank you very much for cheering. That's very kind. Shout out to both Leah and Ducking. You are both silly gooses. That one comes from uh, Shiva there for you both. You gooses. Well, yeah, you've already had one. I don't know why it would stop you from having another. I've certainly not said it to do that. I'll look into it after the stream. Or when I next mono break or something. There is an option to take off my glasses, but that is currently disabled because I won't get much modding done with my glasses off. Anyway, checking is equipped. Yes, so that is working. That's what we want. So with that implementation... Yep, get equipped. There we go. So if you're on Solstheim, you've got the weapon equipped and the stage is there. Lucian will say that, which means get owning quest dot set stage 30.
the most normal of your followers. Good? I think. Is that good to be normal follower? I don't know. Thanks for the follow, Rebecca. Lovely to have you here. Bum, 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 bum. And Zaheimer, welcome and welcome, welcome, welcome one and all. Welcome to the house of fun. Da, 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 da. Right. New line then. So what happens? You get on there. You do that. You can ask him about it. Then you crack off to go and find these bull matches. Oh, thanks so much for the sub, Rebecca. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Right, so... You head off to go and pull these, kill, kill these bull netches. Um, so if you're going to do that, that adds a new enemy type. So what we're going to want there is we're going to want to create a shared info to give Lucian some kind of commentary on you doing that, if possible. If Lucian is the Dragonborn, what will be his favourite shout? Well, if you've tuned into the Lucian the Dragonborn YouTube series available on my YouTube channel. Um, which is uh, 17 episodes in, um, uh, you could see what Lucian's favourite shout is because you'd see what it's like if he actually was the Dragonborn. It's a whole roleplay thing. I spent ages on it. You should watch it. Oh, good, Jay Smiley. I'm really pleased to hear that. That's kind of what I wanted when I added in all this lore stuff for Lucian to say. Right, so this is now going to be, um, oh, here we go, hit it with your fork, do it, do it now, hit it with your fork, do it, do it now. Great, so this is going to trigger, ideally, when the battle with the bull netch starts. Um, oh, no, we've got a capital R there. That's no good. And this is going to say, get stage. I made a typo. I know, I think I corrected it now, though. Get stage. J.R. Lucian. Um, no, we don't actually need that. CC instead. Starfish Agorath quest is equal to, and the stage is going to be 30. And the player has to have the fork equipped. There we go, Fork of Horripilation. Um, those of you who've just joined uh, recently, this is a workshop, a modding workshop stream. So if you guys have any questions about your own modding that you'd like me to help with, I'm more than happy to go into any level of detail discussing answers for you. Just let me know. I'm just cracking on with this in the meantime while I'm waiting for any more questions. Oh, of course, this is a shared info, so there's no point adding conditions for these because they don't count for anything. Just gonna save the game. Ooh, something's crashed. We've got a hang. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, okay, we can still save. Figure out what's going on here. Okay, it's all gone black, but I don't think it matters. I love this one, by the way. This cell. AAA delete when done test, Jeremy. Jeremy did not delete the test. Someone on, um, I think it was Tumblr, drew my attention to this before. Or maybe it was on the Discord. I don't know. Someone showed us this. It's very silly. Creation kit is buggy, but it's much less buggy when you have new chems creation kit fixes installed. Yay, the hermit, you're back. You can talk again. Your timeout's expired. 
Can we steal a fork from the tavern? Uh, you, this is a specific fork. This is the fork of Horripilation. Uh, so now we're going to go to combat. Uh, actually, detection we're going to start with. Normal to combat. See you, Sonic. Thanks for joining the stream. Hope you have a great rest of your day, wherever you are. Priest of Hedges, welcome. Samantha, I found him. I don't know what that means, but hello. I'm glad you found me. I'm glad to have found you too. We found each other here on the internet, and isn't that a wonderful thing? Hey, Megan. Hello there, Megan. Right, uh, so this is going to be a blank line that's going to inherit now from... Oh, I didn't give it any an ID, did I? <laughs> well, Stalia, it's what you wanted. It's what you paid for with your channel points. But welcome back. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, no, um... <laughs> so trippy hearing my voice. <laughs> I'm delighted to hear that. <laughs> yeah, well, it did say timeout, so that's what you get. <laughs> Twitch suggested I add it, so I just did. No, it wouldn't put me in timeout, it puts you in timeout. <laughs> yeah, Nuna shouted you out while you were a timed out. Uh, anyway, right, combat. Uh, no, sorry, detection. Very important that you receive the shout out. Right, so we're now going to inherit this line. And I'm doing this because I want to use it multiple times for different situations. So now we can paste those conditions we copied and pasted. We say make sure the player's got that. You're at that correct stage of the quest. And the enemy now, we're going to do it on combat target get his ID and we're going to check whether the enemy is the bull match. I think Twitch were being was being very funny with that one. I found it funny. It amuses me to watch you time yourselves out. Uh, right, so where is it then? Here we are. Bull match. So if the enemy is the bull match, player has oh, Nuna redeemed hydrate. Okay, so that's probably all we need for that one. Just going to copy and paste this condition stack. Um, oh, and of course we want to say it only once. Only say it maximum of once every 24 hours. And this is going to be get owning quest dot set stage 40. And we're now going to condition this to check that Lucian hasn't already said it before. So JR Lucian CC Staffordshire Gorath is less than or equal to 40 and if it is then it'll set it to 40 and this line will never be set again three more sips of water from people okay, two more mm. one sec i can answer that right so the hermit that is a very valid point uh there is a very specific order to, well there, there are things to bear in mind with the order of conditions so first the most important thing is that your can your first condition should never ever be is sneaking hang on let me find it here we are is sneaking should never be your first condition because if that is the first condition in your step this is the order in which the game oh uh shout out to joseph russell from ducking awesome by the way joseph russell you're fantastic and handsome so uh, good for you um anyway right so this is the order which the game will evaluate these conditions when it goes around every 23 seconds or whatever, whenever the dialogue thing is triggered, um, it'll start with this top condition and check if that's true. If it's true, it will move on to the next condition. If that's true, it'll move on to the next condition and so on and so forth. And if, if it successfully gets through to the bottom of the stack, then your character will say that line. 
Uh, no, it doesn't quite work like that, Unileaf. I'll get on to ands and ors in a second. Um, so, the first issue is, is sneaking. Now, if that is the first condition that is evaluated, this means every NPC you speak to in the game while this quest is active, it will start with this first condition and it will say, is sneaking. Right? Um, and the problem is, it'll do that for talking activators as well. So that's things like the Augur of Dunlane, um, Meridia, uh, the Clavicus Vile statue, the Mayroon's Dagon statue, all these things that are NPCs that cannot sneak. If the game tries to evaluate is sneaking on them, it will crash. So if your first condition in a quest condition stack for dialogue is is sneaking, then it will mean your game will crash whenever you speak to a talking activator and it'll drive you mad until you figure out it was this. So your first condition should never be as sneaking. Beyond that, you want to put them in descending order of um, how often they happen. So every condition that the game evaluates is a um, is work on your CPU on the game engine, right? Uh, so what you want to do so if 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 we go through this stack, the CPU has to check four different conditions every time that you speak to an NPC. Um, it'll go to that one, it'll go to that one, it'll go to that one, if it'll go to that one. If it finds that this first condition is not true, is zero, and it says it's one and it's zero, then it will jump out the stack and forget it. It won't bother evaluating the rest of these conditions. So this is where you can optimize it. So if I put... If I started this with... Get stage, J.R. Lucian CC, Staff of Shea Gorath is less than 40. That would mean on every single NPC the player ever talks to, um, while that stage is less than 40, it will do this check. It'll waste resources doing this check. Whereas, if I instead put get is ID for the combat target is the bull match, that'll mean for every single person that you talk to, it will make that initial check is the enemy the currently the bull match, which will hardly ever happen in the game, except when you're doing this quest. And it'll say, no, it isn't, and it won't bother to evaluate the rest of this stack. So you need to have your most precise, unique niche conditions first that will be wrong as much of the time as possible. And then you'll allow for the more general conditions. And if you have any get random percent conditions which you use in order to reduce the probability of your line being said they should always be last in your stack because they will always be evaluated no matter what happens so you should put them last after all the other checks in order to optimize it um i will get on to all these things otherwise i just want to get on to the last point which was asked about um what you also wanted to know um, was about ands and ors. Now, they are always evaluated in this descending order, right? They always start with the first one, then go to the second, then go to the third, then go to the fourth. Currently, it's that and that and that and that. If I change this to or rather than and, then it'll say, is the ID the bull match? Yes, move on to the next condition. Is the stage this or is the get equipped the fork? So it combines these two into one condition saying either this or this and if that is true if either of these is true it will then move on to the next one which is get stage if we made this one or as well then it would combine all three of these into one condition it would say is this true and now is this or this or this true so the and or the or always refers to the next condition along it's the relationship between this current condition and the next condition in the stack so whether it's and or or doesn't affect the order of how it works through the conditions. Uh, just working through now. Um, Shiva says posture check. Sorry, there we go. Ducking says I must be punished and has redeemed a timeout. There you go, Ducking. Enjoy your timeout. Bingle wants me to hydrate. Hermit's asking about the is sneaking thing. Uh, yes, I found that out through trial and error. I found that out through people complaining to me that my mod was crashing their game in testing um, and I couldn't figure out why and eventually I narrowed it down to this. So yes, trial and error thing. It was an absolute pain to troubleshoot. When you accidentally killed Lucian, the quest of taking Lucian to that certain area did not fail or disappear. Is that intentional? No! Never thought of you killing Lucian while that quest's active. I ought to change that so the quest fails if you kill him while it's going. 
Thanks, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, no, no, there's definitely no distinct order between the ors and the ands. It literally it goes down in this order. It's in descending order. So it does this and that and that and that. But if you put an or in there, then it goes that and that or that and that. So the, the end condition there always refers to the relationship between this line and the next line. So no, the ands and ors are not, the ors are not evaluated before the ands. It just goes through in descending order from this stack. Oh, thanks so much for subscribing, Priest of Hedges. Megan, thank you. That's really kind of you. Oh, I see what you mean now about them being evaluated beforehand. Essentially, yes, okay, I see what you mean. It's like you're putting all the ors into brackets. Um, yes, it's the opposite of pro of normal programming logic. Yes. Because normally your ands are multiplies and your ors are pluses. And that's normal programming logic and you do bid mass on that. But no, it is the opposite of that. I see what you mean now. I apologise. I mis misunderstood what you were saying. Um, how long did it take you to learn how to make Lucian as he is now? It took a year of development. I started in September 2017 and released in September 2018. Do you need extra knowledge about programs or just the creation kit? You don't need any knowledge at all. Um, all you need is access to Google and the ability to type things into the creation kit wiki, which tells you how to use them all. So if I wanted, when I wanted to learn how to check uh, how to make a quest, I just Googled how to make a quest creation kit. Here's a tutorial. This one will do. Follow this. Did that. Great. Followed all that through. Then I wanted to know how do I how do I check in a condition uh, whether Lucian is wielding a sword? How to check for an equipped item creation kit. Identifying equipped items. Someone's done that on the Nexus forum. They've chosen to use get worn form in the script. That possibly works. Uh, but this is a script answer. I want one about conditions so I can carry on looking down. Eventually, if I click on enough of these, I'll find that get equipped form that we've been using. And so on. Literally, I just googled everything. And it tells you all the answers. Um, sorry about that, Jay Smiley. Nothing I can do about it. That's just a Skyrim engine thing. Reload your last save. But yeah, thanks so much for the bits, Bingle. Yeah, honestly, I can't recommend modding highly enough to people. Everyone thinks it's going to be massively difficult and complicated. And yes, it does get complicated, but it's really straightforward to learn each of the steps and do it. You know, I firmly believe anyone can follow it through. And that's a shout out from Stalia to Ducking for being a mood. Ducking, you are a mood. Not really sure what that means but there you go right now so we set this up for uh, the dialogue topic for normal to combat but the trouble with these detection things is they very often just don't work there's no reason for it sometimes they just don't fire so you never want to rely on a line only being said in a detection you always want to add a backup and my backup for that if it's a combat one is normally the taunt line because that usually triggers within five or ten seconds of the battle starting anyway And this is why I made it as a shared info, because now I can just copy and paste it. Hello, ghosty. Welcome to the stream. I am having a lovely day, thank you. All the lovelier for having you here. Creating a follower is definitely an excellent starting point to dip your toes into a modding. I really agree, the hermit. Yes, it's in a sco. It does just work. Yeah, I'd say creating a follower mod is probably one of the most, one of the more straightforward things to learn. You can more easily follow tutorials and things for it. Right, so this is blank. And again, I'm going to inherit from that shared info we created. There it is. And can we paste the condition stack? Uh, no, because we forgot some of the conditions that we added before. So I'm just going to go back and get those. Oh, 
oh, congrats, Rebecca. It's, it's very satisfying when you make a mod and it works. You can't really beat that feeling when you try and implement something new that you've not done before and you go in game and you test it and it works. It's, um, it's a wonderful high. No problem at all, Rebecca. I really enjoy teaching people about this sort of stuff. If I can share some of what I've figured out, I really enjoy doing that. So feel free to keep these questions coming. I'm very happy to answer them. Um, got set stage 40. Well, whenever you do feel ready to make one, you can totally give it a go, Words. Remember, you never have to release anything. If you started making a mod and you weren't happy with it, you don't have to release it. You can just forget about it. It doesn't matter. No harm in trying it. Voice acting is quite the hurdle, though, and most followers without voice acting don't really don't stand out. This is true. Um, if you want to make a splash with follower modding, you're probably better to go with a custom voiced one because there are far fewer of those. The uh, the market the market for non voiced followers is very very saturated, so it's very difficult to stand out with one of those. Um, but you know, voice acting isn't. I mean, everyone has different things that they're good at. Um, ultimately, everyone can. Well, not everyone. Most people can talk, and if you can talk. If you can talk to someone else, you do have the innate ability within you to voice act. The trick is to imagine that there is someone else there and you are talking to them. And if you can get that, which anyone can learn to do, if you can get that, then you can voice act at least well enough for a mod. We won't be making fun of Ghosty. We like Ghosty. You're a modder for Fallout, are you? Cool, I've never actually played a Fallout game properly. I've played the first five minutes of Fallout 4. And that's it. It's shameful, I know, and I need to rectify it on a stream sometime. I just haven't gotten around to it. Ghosty's my buddy, too. We like Ghosty. Now, there we go. Get stage 10, 20, 30. We need to remember to add the stage 40 so we can actually set it. Now, we can probably do something a little bit cunning here. Because we can check whether the player has already killed one because we can check for the presence of these two items the eye of theater and the branch of the tree of shades so let's do that we can add a condition therefore another condition to this stack called get item count we're doing get item count and we're doing see you smiley thanks for being here been great to have you there wasn't any double post hermit but yeah um does the fork smell of cheese i wouldn't know but it's entirely possible uh so now what we're doing is we're checking for cc and we're going to find the item branch of tree of shades ah now we have two versions of this a playable one and a non-playable one and i'm not sure what they're used for so this may be trial and error i'm going to pick the playable ones and we're going to see if that works in game and if that doesn't work when i get to testing i'll switch them across to the non-playable ones now i'm going to say uh we don't want an or actually for these what i want to make sure is that the player currently doesn't have either of these i.e it's the first netch battle But yes, I'm very glad it was informative and inspiring for you, Smiley. I hope it helps you in the future. Here we go, see it as I. And remember, this this stream will be on um will be on a VOD. All my streams go onto YouTube VOD, so do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to catch up on any streams that you've missed. Uh, so there we go, set stage. Dun, 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 dun. So now we've done both of those. Uh, I'm going to copy the condition stack again. Ah, now, did, did I remember to do it on the player? No, look, I'm doing it on Lucian. You see, this is where you can fall down so easily. On the player. And on the player. There we go. I need to go back and change that. So easy to slip up with these things. Combat. There we go. 
Oh, that's lovely of you to say, Skeleton. You're very welcome from me, and I similarly am grateful to all the other mod authors out there. I think mods really make Skyrim. You know, if it didn't have mods, it wouldn't be nearly as fantastic a game as it is. That was Bethesda's secret, really, with it, wasn't it? Bingo's currently drawing a roadman, Lucian. I look forward to seeing that. Right, so we've now added that. And I'm going to save again. Gosh, we've nearly burnt through two hours of the stream. This is slow today, I apologise. I'll try and pick up the pace a bit. Clive does think the Dragonborn smells of cheese. This is true. Uh, anyway, right, so, misc. Shared info. Make a new one. And this one is... Right. Bull Netch number two. Put a fork in it. Referencing the name of the quest there. Kind of fun nod, I think. Lucian loves Clive. Clive is a perfectly normal horse. I believe in you. He believes in the player. This will make him happy. And this is going to be Netch Battle 2. Yep, that's fine. And we're similarly going to copy and paste this. Only now the stage is going to be 50. Netch Battle 2, Bull Netch number 2. We're checking this. the stage is less than 50. And now we need to check that Lucian was present for the previous Netch Battle. So it's got to be greater than or equal to 40. So if he didn't say the first line, he won't say the second one. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, Shiva. That's really what I wanted to achieve by setting up the interactions between the mods. I wanted it to feel like you've got a group of friends with you, you know, like you're in a party rather than just being you with someone following you. Um, get stage, set the stage to 50. It's an interesting theory, Samantha. Right, so check that we've got the hawk. Now we're going to change this. Now we've got to have already got either one or the other. So I've changed that condition to or. So if you have one branch of Tree of Shades or one Seater's Eye, then you'll get this line instead. So that means this one should play after the previous one, on the second Netch Battle. I think. Ah, now we've got a get stage here that conflicts. Oh, no, we haven't. That's fine. That's actually fine. Never mind. Ignore me. Uh, and the player's got the weapon equipped. Great. Thanks for the bits, Bingo. Oh, I loved Clive's appearance in the D&D one shot. If you haven't checked out the D&D series that I've got on YouTube, the Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Lucy and Flavius and the Mysterious Island, it was a lot of fun. So do look in on that if you're interested. Right. So we've got that. Now I'm going to copy and paste that condition stack and we're going to reuse it for the combat taunt instead. Oh, cool. Well done, you, Bert. Delighted to hear it. D&D, I do say, Shiva was kind enough to DM a Dungeons & Dragons uh, game for me. My first ever D&D game. 
And um, yeah, I played as Lucian. Whole thing's role played as Lucian, set in Skyrim, and it's canon to the mod. Um, and it was fantastic fun, and I'm hugely grateful for her to, for, to her for doing that because it was brilliant. Um, and it's all on YouTube. Yeah, I love that about about Inigo as well. Some of Inigo's conversations are really lovely. If you're not in the Discord, uh, the Lost Skeleton, if you click on the link underneath this stream to join the Discord, you totally should, because um, we run D and D games every now and again uh, within the within the Discord group. Um, so if you want to be involved in one of those, you should totally join and sign up. I think yeah, I think we've got another game starting on Saturday. I'm not in it, um, but Grumpy yeah, Grumpy Monk's running one. So um yeah that that's closed there's no not not open to new members now but there will be more in the future which you will be able to sign up for if you want to get in on that Uh right okay and this needs to now inherit from the second one rather than the first one Cool So we've got that far through the quest now Hydrate Do you know what, guys? I'm just going to take a very short break, if that's all right with you. Well, I'm going to know whether or not it's all right with you. Um, I'm going to pop us onto a quick break, and then I will be back in a couple of minutes. Around five minutes, I reckon. So don't go anywhere. Um, take this as an opportunity to go and hydrate yourselves. Uh, get yourself a cup of tea or a glass of water or something. Um, and yeah, I'll be back really soon. Just five minutes, and I'll see you. Stay marvellous. Hello! back now um yeah sorry about that technical hitch while we were on the break the stream died um but it didn't matter because we were on a break anyway so it's probably the optimal time for stream death um but anyway i am now here and so is gray and she's scratching on the bed don't do it you know you're not supposed to she's just having a little wander around uh, anyway hi everyone hope you didn't go anywhere well maybe um, Vos, Vos, Voslarum Zero says uptime. Um, I think you mean, well, if you're asking how long has it been since the stream started, the stream started at five o'clock and it is now nearly seven o'clock. So we've just been going for two hours. What happened? Gray just did something. What did you do? Is everything all right? I think she just knocked a drawer. Anyway, um, oh, thanks for the follow, Fox Queen Lysa. Um, what else is going on? Uh, what is that hanging up swinging? That is my chair. It's a swing chair. I have a chair that you can sit in that bounces. It's made of sort of wicker. Um, Ninja wants timing out. Grey wants her tummy rubbing. Right. Ninja wants timing out. Sorry, not ninja. Not ninja. It's ducking. It's definitely not ninja. Um, oh! If you've linked your Prime account with your Twitch Prime, then you should be able to, um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, which is entirely up to you, but if you want to subscribe, you should be able to just hit the um, hit the subscribe button. I think it should be in the top right. It's purple, or it certainly used to be purple. Um, and then you'll be subscribed to the channel, which will mean you won't see any ads and you get double channel points and your votes count for double whenever we do a poll and all sorts of perks, really. So the timeout is a, is a new reward you can redeem if you want to... If you want to um, spend 500 channel points, I will time you out. <laughs> if you want, there you go. Oh, that's awfully kind of you, Skeleton. Thank you. Oh, Grey loves having her tummy rubbed. She will very often just lie down and put her paws in the air um, until I come over and uh, rub her. <laughs> She's sweet like that. Yay, thanks so much for the sub, Skeleton. 
You are super kind. Thank you. Right, let's get back to the modding. I love that gling it makes. That gling sound. When someone subs. Gling. Gets all the dopamine going. Right, here we are. So, we are getting towards the end of the quest now. It might be good to have some individual comments on the Eye of Theatre and the branch of the Tree of Shades. So I might do that. Might add a couple of idols about those two. There's a bird outside making a lot of noise. So this one's going to be about the Eye of Theatre. Now what do we know about the Eye of Theatre? Let's have a look at what it's got to tell us. Right, nothing on the Skyrim one, but I expect there'll be lore. Theatre. Right, Theatre was a person. Presumably not the same one as Theatre. No, not that one. But. Where are we? Theatre! Is an Imperial living in the ruins of Howling Halls. Heck, there's a lot. Oh, she's the leader of the Apostles of the Light. She survived the Grey March. Unaware that Shogoroth is jugalite. She now hates the Mad God for deserting those living in her realm. All sorts going on. Right, so you do kill her. And you take her eye. Yes, I hate the little zombie on Streamlabs. I think it's well, not very friendly. So yeah, I changed it to a star. Um, it's a setting in Streamlabs. Uh, I'm not quite sure where, but there is, I can't remember now, it was ages ago, but there is a setting in order to choose a custom one, and they've got a whole library of different ones you can pick, so I picked the, um, the thing. Grey wants to go, by the way, that's what she was squeaking about. Come on, girl. Oh. Joseph, I want to make mod, but I'm scared of coding scripting. I'm not sure what to do. I just made room for myself. What do you suggest? I'm thinking maybe quest mod. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. Quest mods are particularly lengthy to do. They are. They do tend to be slow. Um, they take time. So you might be better starting with something smaller. Uh, like an encounter. Uh, or an NPC. Or a follower mod. Something like that generally is probably easier to get into if you want to do a quest you can and there are tutorials for all of this on the creation kit wiki so i would really strongly suggest jumping onto the ck wiki and following their tutorial for creating quests because it's very good follow this through and it'll teach you everything you need to know style you want to time out <laughs> whatever makes you happy oh master emerald's raiding Hello, Master Emerald and your raiding party. Welcome to the stream where today we're working on the staff of Sheogorath um, Creation Club interaction patch. And if you have today, it's a workshop stream. So if you have got any questions about modding of your own that you'd like me to answer, I'm more than happy to take all the time you need to help you through that. Happy to answer anything that you want to ask. So if that is the case, let me know. Bingle redeemed hydrate. Thank you, Bingle. Right. Uh, what does that actually look like in game? If we look at the entry for Seater's Eye. Where is it there? Yep, yeah, it's still an actual eye. My word, it's it's genuinely an actual person's eye. I thought it might have been a gemstone or something. Charming. Uh, 
Uh, right, Rebecca says, do you think the modding tool for the next Elder Scrolls game would be similar, like the knowledge would carry over a bit? Historically, it has been. It's been very similar between Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim. They've had a lot of similarities, so one would assume that they probably would be similar in some way. However, they are making a brand new engine, or so the rumours say, for the new, for the new uh, Elder Scrolls game. So it is possible it might be completely different, but I think it's likely it'll share a lot of similarities with the current creation kit. And also, it won't be coming out for years and years, so we've got a lot of time before then, so I wouldn't worry too much about the next game. How do I get Lucian emotes on Twitch? The Lucian emotes you can unlock um, by subscribing or by cheering to, uh, with bits to reach a certain threshold, or you can temporarily unlock them by spending channel points. There is a, uh, there's a channel point redemption to unlock uh, Lucian, a random Lucian emote for a certain length of time. Otherwise, you get them, yeah, with different subscription tiers and by cheering with bits. Posture check. Hydrate. Thank you, Shiva. <laughs> Thank you, Mama Bear. Oh, yep, yeah, you've got the emotes. If I bring this up a bit further, that'll make me have to sit up a bit straighter, won't it? In order to keep talking into the mic. That's all we need to say about I don't think we need to get into all the lore of theatre actually here. We'll just have a slight element of disgust. It doesn't need to be a huge exposition dump. Lucian might not even know all the story of theatre anyway. Yes, yes, quite. <laughs> Very Lucian. Right, so this is now going to say... Get item count. Run on player. CC, and we're going to find it. The eye of theatre. It's going to be greater than or equal to one. So if the player has got this, then Lucian will comment on it. And it's probably also important that he only says this once. Otherwise, that's going to get incredibly annoying. Um, but we won't bother with a stage checking for it, I don't think. Because these can be got in different orders and it always confuses things if you use stages, obviously for different... Because often you use greater than or less than if it moves linearly from stage 1 to stage 2 to stage 3, whatever, that kind of works. But if you've got two different things you can do in two different orders, I prefer not to bother with stages if I can, just to keep everything simple. So I'm just going to do the get stage for the main quest, but not use Lucian's thing. We're just going to rely on the say once and the only say once every 24 hours thing here. CC staff of Shea Agorath quest equals 30. Ah! Uh, no, I want it actually not equals 30. I want it, where are we? Uh, shivering. Put a fork in it, here we are. It's got to be equal to 30 or 40, so greater than equal to 30 or less than or equal to 40. Okay, Grapple Mint. Hope you, hope you enjoyed the stream. Have a great... Uh, well, if you're going to sleep, have a lovely sleep. It's been really lovely having you here. Do follow the channel if you haven't done, so you can tune into the next one. But yeah, see you again soon. Genuine and actual persons. I thought it might have been Jimson or something. Oh, thanks for the follow, Shadow Knight. Very exciting getting that gling noise. Right. Uh, we'll park that there. I might come back and tweak those conditions a bit more in a bit, but... And this one now is about the branch of the Tree of Shades. Branch of the Tree of Shades, which looks like just a branch, and it's in the Shivering Isles, a screaming branch. What do we know about the Tree of Shades? Tree of, oh, actually, Screaming Branch, does that have a law page? Nope. Tree of Shades, that'll have a law page. No? Grove of Reflection?
Tree of Shades, right. Here's our lore. <laughs> Shout out to Duck, to Ducking Awesome from Ducking Awesome, because self-love is important. Shout out to you, Duck. Right. So we're talking about the shadow. Oh, so this is where you fought Shadowrend originally as well. Right. Okay. Those four orbs in the desktop bar, is that something to do with Lucian or voice recording for Lucian? Do you mean these four? If so, these four, that is, uh, are different versions of X-Edit to use. So, oh. yeah, there is a way to connect Twitch to Discord, I think. Isn't there? There is, for me as a streamer. Yes, there is, because then you unlock subscription um, perks on my Discord by being a sub. Um, if you subscribe on Twitch. So there is definitely a way to do it. I'm not sure of it off the top of my head, but I can look into it for you later if you like. The four orbs, right, so it's something to do with modding. So, they're all versions of X-Edit. On the left here, I have SSE Edit. And here, I have SSE Edit configured with its auto-clean function. So, if I click on this and select a mod, it'll automatically clean that mod for me. Removing dirty edits and such. Nuna wants timing out. Right, okay. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I'll just... And then the other ones on the other side, this is for standard Skyrim. So, these are for Skyrim Special Edition. This is TS TES5 Edit. Uh, which is for Skyrim Legendary Edition. And then this one is, again, the auto-clean version of that. Does that make sense? Um, so they're very useful tools for modding. Yes, definitely. Everyone should familiarise themselves with those. Can't believe I'm timing out a moderator here. But there we go, Nuna. You've been timed out. Hope you enjoy. Do I plan to make Lucian patches for each of the CC mods? Yes, I do. I plan to cover them all. I would love that. Because they're all official content and no other mods uh, do interactions with them. So I think it's a nice, unique selling point for Lucian. Oh, welcome back, Sonic Man. <laughs> no arson. I will do my own moderating if I have to. Right. This is a branch of the actual Tree of Shades. Oh, thanks for not style your follow. Did you make an alt? If so, bad, Nuna. Can't go around making alts, that's fraud. Then it is very old indeed. Hundreds of years old. Ah, about 200 years old, isn't it? Then it's very old indeed. Oh, I suppose it could be a fresh branch for the Tree of Shades, couldn't it? But then the Tree of Shades is one of the oldest trees in the realm, so maybe. Yeah, all because they're very quick to make these patches, really. If I can do one in an afternoon, like I'm trying to do now, um, it's uh, it's pretty easy to do it. So, Stalia Redeem timeout. Wow, okay. Oh, well, well done for figuring out how to connect your accounts. Words without rules. Right, anyway, cracking on. Because I've spent far too long dithering. Um, right, with screaming branches. 
Oh, I'm going to change this entirely. Can you hear... Can you hear distant... Distant screaming? Or is it just me? Oh! It must be coming from that branch. What a fun. Not at all creepy. Feature. Ducking redeemed timeout. There we go. Uh, and we'll leave that on neutral. And this time we're now looking at the screaming branch. Or rather the branch of the Tree of Shades. There we go. And that's covered that. So now we've got that and we've got that. Oh. Right. We'll add a new idol here then. Shout out from Shiva to all you people asking for timeouts. You need actual real life timeouts, you silly potatoes. Mama Bear says no. So now we're making a new thing here, and this is going to set the stage. Now we did say 50 was a stage, didn't we? Didn't we use 50 already? So we're going to use 60 now. So this stage is going to be 60. Boom, boom, boom. Staff of Shea Gorath has got to be less than 60. The stage now has to be 40 for the Staff of Shea Gorath Crest. So you have to have both parts of the staff so you're ready to assemble it. Killed the bull net just obtained the artifacts. You need to access the staff enchanter and combine them to create the Staff of Shea Gorath. Right, so if that's 40, you're still in Solstheim. Don't need to worry about the fork being equipped anymore. Um, yeah, that's all fine. Right. Hey guys, you can spend your channel points however you want. I'm not judging. You only get them by watching me and I want you to watch my streams. <laughs> Need an audience, otherwise there's no point. <laughs> right, so. Well, if... Oh, yeah, you're Lucian with Sweet Roll. Highlighted. I like that, Rebecca. Thank you. Well, if you're determined to create... If you're determined to make this staff, I suppose we ought to find somewhere to put this eye. This eye on that stick. Surprised it's so complicated, really. Surprised we even need an enchanter for that, really. Doesn't sound especially complex. I suppose we ought to find somewhere to put this iron that sticks around. Yeah, that's fine. How do you make a texture? Um, that's a point, uh, Voslarum. I don't actually know. That's a modern question I can't answer because I have never made a texture. Um, I'm not the person to ask on that front, really. Sorry, I don't really do the artsy things. I do the writey and implementy and recordy things. I don't really do the pretty. Of 
Coffee is in the... Is coffee in the Elder Scrolls? I've never come across that. Would Lucian prefer Clem or Black? I guess Clem means milky. Um, in which case, uh, no, uh, he would prefer it with milk because I do. And I've arbitrarily decided to give him that trait as well. It's not every day you carry an eyeball around in your pocket unless you're an alchemist. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that and giant toes. Any plans for comments on Legacy of the Dragonborn content sometime down the road? Yes, of course. I was actually talking about this earlier in the stream. I absolutely plan on doing Legacy content somewhere down the road. That's why I'm prioritizing Creation Club files that don't conflict with Legacy because I would like to make a Legacy patch in the near future. Roadman Lucian is up in Discord. Let's have a look then. Uh, actually, one sec. I'm just going to pop you back onto camera mode. Bom, 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 bom. Right, let's do it. Uh, screen with camera. Here we are. This is Roadman Lucian as created by Bingle. Oi, what are you looking at, mate? Wagwan, pit, pit, pit. I don't know what that says. Whatever that. Oi, what are you looking at, mate? Give us a fiver for your Mackies, yeah? I'll shank you up, bruv. You're a peng ting, innit? I say my name is Lucian Flavius and I think you're well peng. And there we go. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, pifting. I'm entirely unfamiliar with the phrase. But I enjoyed that very much, so thank you. Uh, so there we go. Checking the stages there. Dum, 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 dum. Yep, brilliant. So then finally, we're going to have a line for having made the staff. Well, hooray! Congratulations on possibly now being Lord of the Shivering Isles. Failing that, you have a magic time staff. Enjoy. Oh, hydrate. Noon is back. <laughs> You're back from being timed out. Oh, a gling. Thanks for the follow, Fairy Games X. Very kind of you. Uh, yeah, if anyone watching hasn't yet followed the channel, do go on. Go on and click that follow button. It'll make a gling sound, which makes me very happy, you see. And I'll keep this content coming. Um, for those of you watching as well, um, this is going to be a regular feature. This is going to be every Thursday we're going to be doing this. Um, oh, uh, thanks for the follow, Morlock. Hey, Morlock. I want to hydrate from you. <laughs> I'm not going to say that out loud. <laughs> oh, thanks for the bits, Bingle. Thank you. Um, but what I was going to say, what was I saying? I've confused myself now. Yes, we're doing this every Thursday. Every Thursday at 5pm BST, that's the same time as this week, um, as it was this week, I will be doing one of these modding workshops working on Lucian. So do tune in. We'll be doing other streams throughout the week as and when I'm available. But this is the regular slot where I'll always be here doing modding um, and answering your questions. So do tune in every... Um, yeah, so you can if you, if you want to tune in, uh, at five o'clock every Thursday, you will see me doing this. Uh, but yeah, have I thought about what he says about giving him the Wabberjack? Not especially yet. I will get around to adding commentary for that quest, but I haven't done so yet. However, Lucian does have some thoughts on the Wabberjack that he talks about in the Legacy in the Lucian the Dragonborn YouTube series. So I'll probably draw some inspiration from what I said for it for that. Right, less than one hundred. But now, of course, this has got to be greater than 10. Lucian has to have at some point made a comment about this quest so that we know. So this is an important thing if you're thinking about modding. Um, so 
when you're doing commentary on a quest, if I just left it as get stage to check if the quest is completed, then it will mean when you pick up, the moment you pick up Lucian, if you've already completed this quest, he will immediately comment on it as though he was with you for it. So he'll be confused and it'll be very immersion breaking. So you need to have some kind of stepped system where a stage is set when Lucian or your character, whoever makes a comment on the quest while it's going, and you need to make that a condition for your comment on the quest being completed. And that way it'll make sure that Lucian was at least with you for some part of this quest before he makes a comment on completing it. So it should prevent that issue. You've honestly just been guessing when I go live. I mean, it should notify you, but if it doesn't notify you, I almost always notify the Discord as well as a separate thing um, when I'm planning on going live. So do join the Discord if you're not in that, if you want to keep up with when I'm next going to be going live. And also on my various social medias, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Tumblr, I post on all those places to let people know when I'm planning on going live. So if you want to make sure you don't miss a stream, do follow me on all of those. All the links are below the stream. So do check them out. Um, and then you won't miss stuff. Welcome back, ducking. Right, so we're now saying when Lucian says this line, we'll set the stage to 100. Because 100, I usually use 100, stage 100 to know that's my completion stage. That's usually the final stage of the quest. Um, and we're checking that the stage of this one is greater than or equal to 50. There we go. Um, doesn't matter about the Solstheim location anymore. Uh, so there we go, that's that. And we're done now with all the quest-specific commentary, which is great. So now we've done that, let's go back to the Creation Club file and see what else is added it, added by it. Now we have comments for fighting the bull netches, which are a new creature exclusive to the Creation Club, I think. No, they're not. They're not exclusive to the Creation Club, just this special kind of bull netches. So your standard bull netch, therefore, um, the commentary for a bull netch fight will be something for me to add in the main mod, not in this content, not in this patch. So I won't bother adding stuff for the bullnetch enemy now, uh, because we've already got stuff. We've already got those two quest-specific comments. Um, what's going on? I've missed stuff. Ducking wants to be timed out again. And so does Mads, who hasn't said anything on the stream so far, but welcome, Mads. Uh, I'm going to time you out. Time out Ducking. Ducking's gone. And uh, what about Mads? Where's Mads? Let's find Mads. There we go, Mads. Enjoy. I guess Leah put you up to that. <laughs> um, right. Words is remodding their game and it's a nightmare, especially with trying to choose between all the visual and weather mods. Yes, there are a lot of visual and weather mods. That's a difficult decision to make, so good luck with that. Uh, Stalia wants a timeout as well, as does Magmatic Web. Hello, Magmatic Web. Welcome to the stream. Hang on, hang on. Everyone's all requesting too many things at once. Wait for it. Let me sort myself out. Stalia, right. Stalia, timeout. Who else wanted it? It was, um... Magmatic Web wanted a timeout. Hang on, hang on, right, okay. Let's just tick all these things off. Mark is complete, 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 dum 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 dum. Right, those are all done. Shout out to Duck, we did, we did that one. Shout out to Nuna, who just accidentally almost timed themselves out again. Shout out to you. Uh, right. Modding on console sounds like a nightmare. Having a limit on the size of your mods, I think, must be really difficult. Uh, 
Oh, fairy games. Did you not realize I was the voice of Lucian? How, how did you find the stream then if you didn't if you didn't already know me from Lucian? Uh, right, so we've got a posture check from Shiva. Sorry, Shiva, thank you for pointing that out. And a hydrate. And another posture check. And another hydrate. And another hydrate. <laughs> There we go. Right. Shall we continue? So I'm going to add some general dialogue now for the items added by the mod. And the only item added by the mod, really, apart from these, well, the two items are the Fork of Horripilation and the Staff of Sheer Gorath. So I'm going to add dialogue for both of those. <laughs> you looked through Twitch and happened to see me. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm really glad you're here. Lovely to have you. Too Lucian, too much. Oh, can there be too much Lucian? Don't answer that. Right, so... Uh, these are going to be hellos. I think hellos work really well for weapon commentary. So, hello. These are lines that Lucian will say when you walk up to him and address him. 41 viewers this is this is a lot of viewers we don't normally have this many on the stream thank you all so much for watching really lovely to have you all here i'll have to do more of this sort of thing in the future right i'm not Oh, what a lovely coincidence, Ray. <laughs> lovely to have you here. I hope you've been enjoying Lucian so far. You could lend me anything better. There can never be enough cheese wheels. Cheese for everyone! Oh, that's so lovely to hear, Rebecca. Thank you. Right, now these lines are going to be random. These are going to be added into Lucian's random stack. And what we want here is get item count. Yeah, please plug the Discord, Nuna. We have a Discord. If any of you are not in the Discord and would like to be in the Discord to talk about Lucian and my other projects and things and modding and Skyrim and Star Wars and all sorts with other lovely people, please do join the Discord. We try and keep it very wholesome in there. Oh, that's lovely of you to say, Voslarum. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, we don't want get item count, actually. That's completely the wrong condition. I want get equipped. <gasps> Nuna, are you not a mod anymore? Oops. I guess timing out, timing you out, removes your mod privileges. There you go, you're a modder. You're a modder now. A mod again. Uh, oh, posture check. Thank you, folks. Oh, thank you, Fairy Games. That's really lovely to say. You're being so nice. Thank you. So yeah, in the Discord, the Discord is predominantly about Lucian and my other projects. Um, in regard to the other projects, in case I've not mentioned, I know I mention this all the time, and I'm sorry if I'm annoying those of you who are often on the stream, but for those of you who are new, you may not know um, that I am a writer in my spare time. That's one of my other things I do, other than just work on Lucian. I write books. Um, and if you look underneath this stream, you'll see there's a big picture of a book called Lonely Worlds with my name on it. And that's the book that I wrote. And if it is 99 cents on Amazon. And if you wouldn't mind, thank you so much for the bits, Bingle. Um, but yeah, if you wouldn't mind just clicking on it and checking it out on Amazon, I'd really appreciate that. You don't have to buy it or anything, but just have a look at it. Um, and if you could consider seeing if you want to buy it or not, I'd really appreciate that because it's really difficult to get my book out there and get people to buy it. So 
any sales I get are fantastic. Um, so I'd love you guys to have a look if you want to sort of see more of the stuff I've been working on apart from just Lucian. And for what it's worth, it is canon to the Lucian mod in ways that I haven't got into yet. Um, but there's definitely a plan involved. It's not an Elder Scrolls book, obviously. Um, but I do try and tell one consistent canon story with all my projects. So um, I am hoping to sort of tie them together in some way in the future. Oh, thanks, guys. You're being very nice about it. I feel really awkward plugging my stuff. Um, but I know that's what you're supposed to do. But yeah. Um, oh, yes, there's also a short story on my website called The War's End, um, which is a prequel. It's a prequel story to Lucian. Um, and yeah, it's all about his mum. So if you want to get to know Lucian's family a bit better, you could read that story, which is on my website. And um, I can drop you a link in the chat if you like. Here we are. This is where you can find the War's End short story. It's on there. If you just click on that, you'll see the link. And it's there. That's free. Along with lots of other short stories. All on the website. Um, yeah. Oh, if you could have a look, Fairy Games, that'd be really kind of you. Thank you. Uh, right, so there we go. We've got one line about the fork. Do you mind if I ask where you're from? Um, I am from the United Kingdom. I am. I live just outside of London, um, which is where I am now. <laughs> I prefer not to give my exact address out on the internet because that's never a good idea. Um, but yes, in the south of England, just outside of London is where I am. So hi. Thanks, Shiva. That's nice of you to say. I just do feel awkward plugging my stuff, you know, because you don't, guys don't want me to advertise to you all the time. I try and find the balance, you know. Well, thanks, Words Without Rules. Well, if you do buy it, I really hope you enjoy it. Please do let me know what you thought of it. It's really lovely getting feedback. You're from the US? Yeah, lots of lots of you guys are from the US. I seem to have a bigger audience in the US than I do in the UK. I guess because Skyrim has a bigger audience in the US. Oh, you're from the UK too? Well, a fellow Brit. Welcome then, Fairy Games fellow Brit. It is lovely to see you. Or read you. The Netherlands. Canadians. People from all over the world. An Australian. Hello. What on earth time is it for you? It must be late. Uh, early. It's early in the morning, isn't it? Really early in the, in, in Oz. Um... Why are you watching Twitch at 4am? What are you doing watching my stream? <laughs> I mean, great. It's lovely that you're here. It's really great that you're here. It's just... Don't you want to sleep? <laughs> right. Um... This fork makes my hairs stand on end. Just a little comment about the meaning of horripilation there. Um, and I'm going to... Oh, it's going to be very rare for Lucian to actually be wielding the fork, so I'm not going to bother with get random percents on those. Oh, Bingle, you just ordered the book. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Thank you. I really hope you enjoy it when you get it. Oh, welcome back, Mads. It was a shiny new button. I can see the, the the issue with that. So when you were putting all that dialogue for Lucy, when you're going to record it, it just be, of course I were going to record it. I'm, I normally record it at the end of the stream. When I finish doing all the implementation, I record it. But I think we might run out of time today to get through all the recording. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. I, in fact, I think we will run out of time to get through the recording today. But I might at least be able to start it. Ducking wants another time out. Fair enough. You use all your points. That's fine. They're yours to use as you wish. Nuna says hydrate. 
then hydrate I shall. Stalia says, oh, imposter check from Kindle Shard. Thank you for the uh, heads up on that. Thank you. And I will chug as instructed. Is it okay to add all the patches you're making to a current save game? Yes, it's absolutely fine. Oh, Mads wants me to chuck as well. <laughs> yes, it's absolutely fine to add these patches mid-game. I'm designing them with that in mind. You know, I'm being careful not to add anything that's going to cause problems if you add them mid-game. 20 minutes till clap, clap o'clock. Yes, I will be going to clap for the NHS at 8 o'clock. It might be the last one this week. Um, but yes, got to do that at 8. So there we go, there's random ones. I'm probably going to need more water, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, we already copied and pasted that one. Um, so this is going to be now for the player using the fork. I'd hate to end up on the wrong end of that fork. Runs on the player. Ah, now what we forgot to add here for these things is not just get equipped, we also want is weapon out to check that the player is actually, uh, Lucian's actually holding it in his hand because otherwise it could be on sheathed on, the, on his back, which will make it weird for him to talk about it. Now the thing with is weapon out it's weird. You would think it would be is weapon out one. But as we talked about in the last stream, it's actually you want is weapon out two. Because is weapon out one just checks if your fists are out. Is weapon out two checks if you're holding a weapon. So you actually want is weapon out two to check that the uh, Lucian is holding the fork in his hand. I think it's nice that we clap for the NHS. I think it's a nice thing to do. I know it doesn't help them, really. I know what they need is higher wages. <laughs> but unfortunately, I can't control that. But I can clap for them to show my support, at least, which is something. <laughs> Take a breath. I'm not doing a command for that. Uh, right, so this one, did we do... Right, I hate to end up on the wrong end of that fork. There we go, happy with that. Oh, we want to have... Switch the order around to make it more efficient. Get equipped first, then his weapon out. And then this one... <clears throat> Um, around my way, um, people bang pots and pans. It's the general thing. They clap and bang pots and pans together. And I think there's some people up and down the road with, like, what do you call them? Those horn things. Vuvuzelas? The big thing that goes... Brrr. They've got some of those. It's all very noisy. Well, yeah, I don't know whether it does help or not. I don't think it can hinder... Really, but I do think I do think they could do with more sort of material assistance rather than just moral support. But there we go. Um, so, what can I say about this? What can I say? Hmm. Fireworks. I don't think we have those here generally for the clap for the NHS. Oh, shout out from Stalia to Mads for being the best friend ever. There you go. Yeah, if there's nothing you can do apart from that, if you know, if there's nothing more we can do than that, then we do what little we can. Absolutely. Gosh, 43 viewers. I've never had this many. Well, I have temporarily when we've been briefly raided and things, but I've never had this many sort of 
as a continuous thing. Thank you all so much for being here. It's really lovely. Um... The mighty dragonborn fights with a fork. Who'd have guessed? Now, of course, if we're doing this, we need to have a condition to check whether the player is in fact the dragonborn, for which we do get stage. DA04, which is dragon rising. Uh, no, it's not. It's not DA04. That's Daedric. MQ04. MQ104. Dragon rising. And I just need to check the stages for that. And that has got to be greater than or equal to 160. Get stage dragon rising is greater than or equal to 160. Ah, glad you enjoyed. Good to know that you people find my lines vaguely amusing as I write them. Um, right. Uh, so we're checking there that the player has completed dragon rising. Which means Dragon Ball makes sense. There we go. So that's the Fork of Horripilation lines done now. Two of each I think is fine. Now we want ones for the Staff of Shea Gorath. So now we're going with Get Is Equipped. Sorry, just Get Equipped. There's a video where a guy beats Skyrim with nothing but a fork. It's awesome. I haven't seen that, but it sounds most amusing. Staff of Shogoreth. There we go. Get equipped. Bum, 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 bum. 46 viewers now. What is going on? Uh, I need to not pay attention to the viewer count. I know it's um, not healthy to keep an eye on that, but yeah. Uh, right. So here, yeah. Yes, thank you for the pun ideas. We might need those for combat. <laughs> the dragonborn kills me with a fork, quite. <laughs> right, so this is now about the staff of Shea Gorath. Um... This staff... Uh, I'm not going to capitalise that, actually. This staff is weird. Very effective. Granted. But weird. Hydrate! Mitten squad. I'll look him up. What's my favourite mod for Skyrim? That's a tricky one. That's like trying to choose a favourite child. Um, the first mod I ever played was Moon Path to Elsewhere, which I love very much, but a lot of that is nostalgia value. It is a great mod, but, you know, it's aged. Um, but I do really love that. Big fan of Legacy, obviously, but I think it has to go to Inigo. I think Inigo is probably my favourite mod. It's fairly mainstream choice. But, you know, it's such a fantastic mod. It's the father of all follower mods. And it's um, it's the most incredible piece of work, you know? So I've actually created a person like that. Rather than just a follower, you know, it's a proper person who you properly connect with. Um, so hats off to uh, Smart Blue Cat for doing that. Oh, posture check. Right. Now, of course, the Staff of Sheogorath will be wielded more often than the Fork of Horripilation, because the Fork has very low stats, so it's highly unlikely Lucian would equip that anyway. However, the Staff, on the other hand, is going to be equipped more often. Not much, granted, but more. So I'm just going to put a quick get random percent less than 50 condition in here to make sure that 
um, it doesn't fire all the time. You know, you want to space it out a bit. I don't think any of us can wait for V3 of Inigo. But let's not put pressure on Gary over it. You know, it'll be ready when it's ready. But I'm very much looking forward to it when it does come. The staff is weird. Very effective, granted. Very effective, granted, but weird. Um... Another line for the player... Or for Lucian while wielding it. Um... For an eye on a stick, this thing's awfully good at making people fall over. Sort of usual Lucian nonsense. 50 viewers! I've got 50 viewers! That that doesn't happen. Why have I got 50 viewers? Thank you. Thank you all for being here. 50 viewers. Marvellous. Much excitement. Oh, it's gone down to 43. There we go. It was a brief moment, but a glorious one. The highest I ever got to was like 61 viewers when I had a big channel suddenly raid me while I was playing Battlefront, but they all disappeared within minutes. Um, so, oh, up to 51 now. Um, but, uh, yeah. Never got 50 off my own back before. So that's very exciting. Do I record the voices for these conversations at a later point? Yes. Um, so when I'm making a patch that I intend to ESL flag, you have to record, you have to do all the implementation first and then all the recording because the form IDs all need to be renumbered when you're done with the patch. Um, and when you renumber the form ID, you need to similarly rename the audio file. So if, you've, if I'd already recorded audio for this now, I'd have to go through renaming each of the individual audio files to meet whatever the new form ID is when I renumber them, which is a pain. I've had to do that before for the Umbra patch and it was a nightmare. So no, you do all the Im implementation first for something like this and then you do all the recording afterwards. Ducking redeemed hydrate. But when I'm typically working on Lucian, I'm, it's more common that I'll do one line and then record it, and then another line and then record it. You know, like the main mod. Does Lucian comment on certain armor places, armor pieces and or weapons when you give them to him besides the ones working? Yes, he does. But I'm not going to tell you which, because it's much more fun to have that happen automatically in-game. Because, there's you know, there's thousands of weapons and armor in-game. Um, which, uh, obviously, I couldn't record for all of them by any means. So it's a tiny percentage of them that Lucian has lines for. But he does have lines for some of them. And I look forward to you finding it. What stuff does the... <laughs> Do we need the toilet yet? Uh, no, not yet. Thank you. Um, what stuff does the staff do? Uh, the staff makes people paralyzed. It has an area of effects effect that makes people paralyzed. Um, yeah, you should totally download all the patches for Lucian for um, any of the mods or CC files that you have. That's why I made them. Uh, right, anyway, did we... Right, uh, stuff is weird. This thing's awfully good at this. So now we want ones for the player. I usually do two lines for the player and two lines for Lucian for each of them, so... Right, on the player... On the player is weapon out... Your staff is looking at me. Please make it stop. <laughs> yeah, please don't drown me. I would prefer not to be drowned. If that's at all possible. It has been hot over here, but it's cooler now because it's the evening. There we go, two sips. Oh, heck, Noonie, you have such unlimited power now. You've got enough points for that. Right, get random percent there. there, 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 there. Your staff is looking at me. Please make it stop. I'll just check the conditions on the last one because I've been slightly distracted talking to you guys while I've been doing this. Um, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Good, 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 good. Staff is looking at me. Please make it stop. Yep. So we're going to do one more. 
Ghosty redeemed timeout. There you go, Ghosty. You're timed out. Hope you enjoy that. Don't know why you guys like this. More hydrating. Oh, thanks, Stalia. Ducking wants banishing to the Shadow Realm. Bye, ducking. Now, I'm going to have to dash off in five minutes uh, in order to do the clap for carers. Time to do 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 Right. Your staff is looking at me. Please make it stop. Um, you need another line. Oh, I know what I want to do for this. I'm not sure... What's more terrifying, that thing or the Wabbajack? Nice bit of continuity. So then we can do um, get item count. On the player. Maybe you stick it to him, pun, because the staff is a stick. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can do something like that. Um, anyway, this is going to be D. Wabberjack, 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 Wabberjack. Where's the Wabberjack? Did I miss it? Hmm, gonna Google it. Hawk, Hawk, you can't, Hawk, you can't redeem five timeouts. You can only redeem, you can only redeem one at a time. I, I, I can't remember to redeem all of them for you, so I'm just gonna reject them all except one. Also, hello, welcome to the stream. There you go, Hawk, you're gone. Hope you enjoy. Oh, thanks for the follow. Uh, no, you can't. I'm afraid I've disabled song requests and such for this stream because I'm trying. Uh, in order, I'm trying to crack on and actually do some modding. And if I keep stopping for songs all the time, we really won't get anything done. DA15, Wabberjack. But you'll be able to regime them for that next time, sure. And you want me to hydrate? Anyway, there we go, Wabberjack. I don't know why I didn't spot that last time. And check it's greater than one for the player. So the staff of Shergoreth is equipped, the weapon is out, the get random percent is less than 50. We're gonna put that there. And the get item count is there. Gonna switch those round. There we go. Well, I thought these hydrates and these posture checks and the timeout thing would be fairly... Uh, I wasn't expecting you all to do them so much. And they are at least mercifully quicker than me stopping to perform a whole song every couple of minutes. 
If the stream has ended up rather chaotic, hasn't it? Uh, right, so we can do some combat taunts now, I think. Be warned. I've got a fork, and I'm not afraid to use it. Yeah, with more viewers, if, if more viewers do come, which would be a wonderful problem to have, then I would probably have to limit them somehow. But, um, yes. At the moment, it's fine. Wonderful. Oh, Gling! Thank you so much for the follow, Stradenko. Got a fork and I'm not afraid to use it. There we go, that's equipped. Get equipped equals one. That's all we need to use there. Right, I'm going to have to dash off for a few minutes for the um, uh, clap for carers and I will be right back to wrap everything up. Right, I'm back again. We have got 15 minutes more and then I really do need to go. Um, so I'm just going to get as much as I can done. Try and wrap up with all the implementation so that all that's left is the recording. And then we can crack on with that on another stream another time. So, be warned I've got a fork and I'm not afraid to use it. I'm just going to sort of blitz through these a bit so I might not be quite so active in the chat just while I'm doing this. Um, oh, Ray Anthony, you're still running version 1.3. Well, that, yeah, you need to update. Update to version 1.5. Like, I fixed loads of things. There's uh, the, Sorry, the Lucian is specifically designed for you to be able to update him mid-playthrough, and it's absolutely fine to do so. Um, but seriously do, because there's quite a lot of bugs in some of the older versions that you probably want to iron out. So yeah, um, do that whenever. Be warned, I've got a fork and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, of course, I've not turned back on the, um, the screen with camera. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back, ducking. Oh, you've merged him. Right. Okay. Well, in that case, good luck to you. I don't. Um. I can't support merging myself. That's not recommended to do with Lucian. So, if you have merged him, um, I wish you luck, and I hope you don't run into any problems. Um, I know lots of people have merged him, and they seem to have done fine with it. Um, but I really can't help with anything that comes of doing that. Right. Uh, another line for it then. <laughs> you are ridiculous, ducking. Um. I was clapping for the NHS. Ducking wants me to hydrate more. No, I can't. I'll just. Shall I just finish the bottle? And then that's it. There we go. Hydration is completed now. All done. I'm turning it off. Oh, I can't turn it off. Um, it won't let me turn it off because I need to go into my settings to do that. But don't worry. Uh, you can still spend your points, but I won't do it. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. Hydration is finished now. Well, Ray, if that's what you want to do, by all means do that. But I definitely don't recommend merging Lucian with his patches. I've never recommended that and it's not supported. But if it works for you, fine. But I can't help if you get problems. Now, has anyone got any good fork puns that aren't rude? Uh, that was the one about being fork giving, wasn't there? Um...
<laughs> I like the something with forgiving. Um, I'll forgive if you forget. Uh... You won't fork get to this in a hurry. <laughs> Sorry, not my best work. Uh, get random. I think we want to get random percent here to be less than. <sighs> 30. <laughs> it's fine. We've done the fork pun. I'm happy with that. Uh, and that's for having equipped that. Um, and then, of course, we've also got the staff of Shea Gorath. I have no idea what you're talking about, Hawk. I don't know who that is. I don't know what you're after. But great. <laughs> Ghosty, that's brilliant. Um, I'll stick it to you. Well and good with my stick. It's a stick with an eye on it. Are they indeed? Well, I think. Thank you. Uh, now you say that, Samantha. We already used I've got my eye on you for the Ruin's Edge one. That's a bow with an eye on it. We already used I've got my eye on you for that. So I can't have Lucian recycling the same material. But good thinking. Um... I have to warn you, this staff makes me Lord Staff makes me Lord of the Shivering Isles. So you know I'm kind of a big deal. I'm glad you enjoy the There's No Escape one. I was particularly proud of that. Is it okay to bring Lucy into New Lands mods? Yeah, sure. So long as the mod... You look on the mod description and see, does this mod support followers? Um, and if it does, yeah. I mean, if he'll come with you automatically on his own, then it's probably okay. If he won't come with you, don't teleport him in there to force him. Don't bring it, spawn him in with a console or anything. Just leave him be. But if he will happily follow you to that place, it's probably fine. He just won't have anything really to say about it. You would have to make a third patch if you wanted them to comment on both. Yeah, and I think patches for patches is a step too far for me, really. An eye-opening pun? I don't know about that, but yeah. Doing the goodly goods, JR. Don't know what that means, but hello. Welcome. Uh, okay, unless anyone else can think of anything 
any final line to add? I don't know if you can think of anything, finally, for any of the various things we've talked about. For the fork, for the quest, for the branch. Anything, really, I can add it, or otherwise we'll probably wrap up there. Yeah, no, you got the logic right, Nuna. Call it the eye patch. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, but yeah. Anyone got any ideas, or are we going to leave it there? Because, you know, I've got two taunts for each of the weapons. I've got two, two hellos for each of the weapons for the player and for Lucian. I've got various idols. That's not a knife. This is a fork. Is that like the Simpsons thing? Ah, I see you've played knifey, you've played uh, knifey spoony before. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Oh, actually, I can do a gag with that. I can do a gag with that. Hang on. No, there's no more hydrating ducking. The Wabberjack is uh, going to be isn't contained in this mod. The Wabberjack stuff will be in the main mod, in the main Lucian.esp. Um, but here we go then. Um, that's not a knife. Oh, this is a knife. Oh. I see you've played Forky. I see you've played knifey forky before. It's a very niche gag there for Simpsons fans. Oh wait. You're right. It's not. I see you've played knifey forky before. Wonderful. It's not knife. It's not, oh wait, you're right. It's not. I see you played knifey forky before. Happy with that. Done. Oh, of course, the enemy has to be wielding a one-handed weapon. So get equipped. Item type. And then I just need to check the implementation for that on the CK wiki. Get equipped. Equipped item type. Welcome back, Bingle. We're just about to finish. I'm just doing the final line here. Right, so... One-handed dagger is two. So I need to do get equipped item type equals two in the left hand for the combat target. Or... Get equipped item type in the right hand equals two. There we go. So this is a very niche line that we'll hardly ever play. So it doesn't need to get random percent. But I think it's fun that it's there. A little Easter egg for people. Cool. And now we're done. So I'm going to close that down. It's going to be... Um, gonna have to do another stream for the recordings we'll probably come back for that another day i probably won't wait until next thursday to do it um i'll probably do it sooner than that but i'll let you guys know when i'm gonna do it i'll be sure to post on the discord or on facebook on twitter etc um but yeah thank you all so much for watching as i said before this is going to be a regular thing every thursday at 5 p.m bst we're going to be doing one of these workshop streams um working on lucian and answering any of your modding questions so yeah do tune in again next week um, if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, I'll be here. Oh, more bits. Thanks, Bingle. Um, but yeah, um, if you haven't followed, followed the channel, do follow the channel and you'll get notified next time I stream. Um, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. Um, like I said, I mentioned before about the book. There is a book that I've written that's linked below. It's called Lonely Worlds. There's a big picture of it underneath the stream. Please do check it out if you've got time. Um... And otherwise, there is, of course, the Lucian the Dragonborn YouTube series, where I'm role-playing as Lucian, exploring the idea of what if Lucian was the Dragonborn. 
Um, so if you haven't checked that out, do check it out. It's a lot of fun. That's all on my YouTube channel, which again is linked underneath the stream. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you are. Um, be safe, be kind to one another, wash your hands and stay marvellous. I hopefully will see you all again really soon. Bye!